You know, uh, artists are usually depicted as tortured souls, lots of emotion that they need to get out. And honestly, it's true. So <laughs> what I like most about it is just being able to, to express yourself. My name is Tzatzi Rujeje, or Sunshine Tzatzi, if you know me from social media. Uh, I'm a social media influencer and a singer. I was born in Enschede in Holland, the Netherlands. Uh, I'm a South African citizen and I've come back home here to Rwanda. So I'm from many, many places all at once, um, which hopefully makes me diverse and not scattered. Uh, otherwise, I have one sister. She's older than me, but she looks like my twin. And you'll get to meet her later. I'm Naledi, and my relationship with Tati is that she is my younger, adorable, stubborn sister. My mother's Sutu, from me Sutu. And my father's Rwandan, who grew up in Uganda. Somewhere in between Lesotho and there, <laughs> I was born, so that's how I ended up being born there. Uh, we later moved to South Africa, um, and that's where I grew up, that's where my sister and I grew up. Um, and then around 2010, actually 10 years ago, uh, we decided to join the move back. I started the new account last year, October. And I just, first of all, behind the name, uh, Tzatzi Li Tzatzi in Sisutu means the sun. So I call myself Sunshine Tzatzi. And it was sort of like, I, I've always seen social media as like my medium of expression, where I can go and really be myself express myself through my image and my voice. I've always loved the, the medium and it's always spoken to me. And I love how instant it is and how you can reach people so easily from all over the world. So um, I started my Instagram thing <laughs> and uh, I chose the handle and built the brand around warmth and positivity, but also fire and strength and just a real opportunity to delve into myself, the positive parts of myself, you know, trying to bring the best out of myself and exploring. So if you are to ask me who I am, I think, uh, well, what I hope is that I live up to the wonderful name I've been given, which is the sun. I hope that I'm a warm person. I hope that I do and I continue to bring brightness into people's lives. I try to wake up early in the morning. Haven't done well for the last two weeks. Um, with lockdown and everything, it's easy just to stay in the warm covers. But on my ideal day, my best self day, okay, I wake up around uh, six or seven. I have my water and my morning coffee or green tea if I'm feeling healthy. Uh, I have a journal where I write a list of 10 things I appreciate very generally, just to get me in a positive mood. I do some yoga stretches, very simple. I'm not standing on my head yet, but I will get there. Myself. Scroll through Instagram endlessly. I'm joking, not too endlessly. And yes, yeah, sometimes make some content if I'm feeling inspired. So during lockdown, there wasn't much to do. So we all got on TikTok because <laughs> they seem to have been having fun there. 
and I just yeah there were some challenges where you got to dance and stuff and I thought that was fun but then I was also like hmm, I really like to sing let me try that uh, and it was also a way uh, I think you can tell by my accent that I probably don't have a lot of Kenya Rwanda in me <laughs> so it was also a little way to try and learn some through music which did help a lot um, and yeah just really feel like just really immerse myself in the entertainment industry and the creatives it was a really easy and accessible way so I did that a bit uh, I got some attention I got some recognition from some really big names in the industry that was really cool and encouraging and I think uh, even though I, I've liked a lot of things, I love acting, I love singing, etc, uh, etc, et but that was really encouraging for me and it made me think that, hey, maybe I can pursue it too. You know, uh, artists are usually depicted as tortured souls, lots of emotion that they need to get out. And honestly, it's true. So <laughs> what I like most about it is just being able to, to express yourself. It's, it's not easy to be as emotional as you want in general today. You know, people like don't catch feelings. <laughs> or if you're emotional, people think that you're vulnerable or you, you don't have good control over yourself. You know, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of frowned upon you need to be quiet and chilled and decent all the time. So it's really just a way to get whatever's boiling within you out in a really positive and constructive way. That's the number one thing I love about it. Also because it's fun. Honestly, artists have a lot of fun in life. Uh, life is very inspiring. Everything is inspiring and everything is very meaningful. And so I appreciate that. Once I was on stage and I was very young, and I was in the chorus and I remember my parents were in the audience so I took the opportunity to wave at them right in the middle of the play I was like hi mommy hi daddy you know I did not care and the, the girl next to me was like oh, Tatsy stop it and I was like no and I continued waving when I just when I look back on that I just I have to laugh at myself. Never take yourself too seriously. It's exciting to know that my content has attracted um, some attention and has attracted an audience. It's really cool. I feel very cool. Um, and when someone has something, you know, genuine and positive to comment on my posts, I'm really touched because even if it may just be a picture with a caption, I did put effort and, and thought in my heart into it. So when someone acknowledges that, it really feels good. I'm actually very technical. Um, I don't have tertiary technical um, training, but I'm really good with computers. <laughs> And I'm really good with fixing electronics, um, uh, with software, like for the bits of music I have made, I have made my own beats, I've recorded myself, I've mixed and mastered myself, and I've been doing that just for music for myself since I was a, a since before I was a teenager actually. So I guess it does dip into social media in a way. <laughs> We talked about singing, <laughs> I talked a lot about singing. I really want to um, professionally produce uh, and share my song. It's called Secret Akabanga and I'm really excited to, to do that and to do my best in launching my career in music. So that's the chorus. 
I'm really proud of you and I love your music. You have a fantastic voice. Uh, continue to shine and just bask in your power and your God light and you're a phenomenal person and I love you and I'm happy to be your sister. And uh, yeah, let's, let's live and love life and yeah. I really like Rhonda, actually. I, I, I really enjoy it. I think, and not just because it's pretty and it's clean, <laughs> which are really big deals, like, I, I think, unfortunately, when I go to some other countries and you look on the street and you see everything, you start to really appreciate the cleanliness and organization of this country a lot. Other practical things is the safety. I really, really appreciate the safety. I, could, I can walk on the street at night as a woman, and that's a very big deal in this world. <clears throat> I also really appreciate how much Rwandans love their culture and how much they preserve it without any force or, or, or sort of influence to do so, especially the youth. The youth still continue to embrace and are so proud of that culture. What I love most about my sister is that she is a go-getter. Like if she sets her mind on something, she is very self-motivated, very self-driven. She'll do research. She'll just really absorb all the information she can and just set her mind to do it. My family moved here in 2010. Uh, I stayed in boarding school in South Africa for a year and I don't think any of us really understood uh, the, the emotional impact of that. So, uh, when you're a child, I, I was like 15, when you're a child, it, 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 was, it was quite a shock because my family and I are very close. And I remember just going to the mall to do some shopping uh, and it was a store that I, I would frequent with my mother and sister, especially. So there was a security lady at the door and she said, Oh, where are your mother and sister? And I said, Oh, they moved to another country. And she said, Oh, shame, they left you. That was not helpful. I don't think she meant to make me feel bad in any way. But uh, I think encountering people got that in my head. So. Just healing from that was like was a little bit traumatic uh, and hard, but I, I, I moved here the next year, so it wasn't for a very long time. I, uh, I think we all know that Rhonda is quite conservative. I think in terms in terms of things like leaving home or going to live with your boyfriend if you're not engaged or you haven't had ceremonies like that. At least what I get from my parents, my uncles, my aunts, the, the, my, my elders over here is that they just want especially young girls to be safe. I think they may not feel it's safe for an 18 year old to be living by themselves uh, I think they want to give uh, an 18 year old a little bit more guidance into adulthood. I think, you know, um, moving in with your boyfriend, I think they also, they just want to protect you, you know. Some men, and women, but some men can really waste your time and you can find yourself just cohabitating with someone. <laughs> for 10 or 20 years and then not really trying to develop the relationship any further and that might really hurt a woman and frustrate her. So I think they're trying to protect. As for other things like um, just social norms and there was, a, there was an interesting thing actually when I, I went to Green Hills for a few, a couple of years here and uh, one of my classmates actually did a, a whole talk about why it's so taboo to, for example, wear a pair of shorts in Rwanda. It's like you can wear a skirt up to here, but if they're shorts, <laughs> people gonna lose it. 
And it was just uh, an interesting thing. I think that's something worth rethinking. Uh, women's bodies uh, and what they mean and what's considered decent and indecent. Because to be honest, like thighs are not sexual organs. <laughs> They're not private parts, they're not even secondary private parts. Uh, I think, uh, at least for myself, I like to wear tight-fitting dresses. I like to wear even shorter dresses sometimes and things like that. I do feel like we use clothes to express ourselves. And if whether it's a man or woman, I dress it in a way where it, you, you can tell it's intentionally um, sexy, sensual, even revealing, yeah, probably that person would be more um, liberal and open to expressing themselves sexually in general. I do think so. What I don't think is that a person's consent should be assumed because of that. People who are shy, if you can, if it's available at your school, join the drama club. If you don't have a club, find other kids who want to get out of their comfort zone and start a, a drama club where you just speak and play and act together. We've grown and we've matured. So most of the time our disagreements don't last more than five minutes anymore. I think we let off steam and then afterwards we're just like, yeah, I'm sorry. And then the other person's like, it's cool, you want wine? Sure, you know. She brought me coffee this morning and uh, Lord knows I needed it. And um, yeah, and she makes great chapati. <laughs> and she's just a really loving person. She's a sunshine. <laughs> She's sunshine sexy. <laughs> I don't reply your messages.